the crawfish that we ship on the internet through CajunCrawfish.com are all grown right here on our farm. Our crawfish are lively and you know they're, they're what they should be when they arrive because we control every single sack that, uh, that leaves here. You know, we pack them right, right here on the farm and the FedEx comes right here to the farm and picks it up and we know where they were grown, we know where they were packed, we know where they were harvested, you know, we know everything about them. Y'all know how to tell a male from a female? I'll educate y'all pretty quick here. You gotta, they, they mean right now, no? You see, this one's claw, it's a shorter, fatter. This one is longer, slimmer, that being the male. And if you look under the tail, you see a little prong under that, that's being the male, and this one here being the female, she don't have the prong. And uh, all of their claws are the same like that. It's a true rotation. Rice and crawfish farming is a, is a true rotation. Uh, we're up to 4,000 acres right now that we, we totally rotate. Uh, so at any given time, we'll have 16, 1,700 acres in, in one or the other crops. We will uh, plant that crop, that crop will grow. It'll reach what, what I call a canopy stage in about June. Rice is flooded, it grows in water. So we'll take uh, seed crawfish that we caught somewhere else or we bought somewhere else and we'll literally go put them in that field. Uh, we'll put anywhere from 30 to 60 pounds to the acre, and those crawfish are the brood stock for next year's crawfish crop. One guy run um, approximately about 1,200 traps a day, you know, and uh, he run that every day, uh, at least six days a week, sometimes seven. As I travel the country and people ask me about crawfish, they always want to know if it's sustainable. That, that's sort of a key word these days. and. Uh, I often think we invented sustainability. We didn't do it intentionally, it's just part of the way it works. We plant a rice crop, we don't use any harmful chemicals to grow it. We can't because we have live crawfish in the field. And then the, the leftover rice crop is the food source for the crawfish for the next year. You couldn't get a more sustainable operation. My family's been stewards of this land for over 100 years, and my brother and I intend to continue that tradition. We, we plant rice with the airplane. I'm a pilot, my dad was a pilot. It's just become part of the, the culture here. The airplane is part of what we do. When the airplane's flying and it just went by, uh, it flies all the time. There's an airstrip right in front of my office. When the airplane's flying, we know it's planting season. We know we're planting rice for the next year. That's gonna be the food source for the crawfish for the next coming year. We feed the crawfish crop from the the leftover rice doubles in the field from the rice harvest. After you harvest the rice, there's a substantial amount of uh, biomass that's left over, and rice is a, an aquatic uh, grass. It grows in the water, so it's ideal to feed crawfish on that crop to where you're not just trying to uh, plant a food source just for crawfish. You can actually plant a food source and hopefully make a profit on it and then feed the crawfish with the, with the leftovers. In about October or so, depending on the year and the, and the weather temperatures, we'll reflood that rice field. And crawfish dig a burrow into the ground, sort of like a rabbit. At that time of the year, most of them, if you see them crawling around, you'll see the mama crawfish, they'll have a bunch of babies on their tail. And you can go out there, my brother does a lot of this with a, with a little dip net, and we'll go and dip and see how many crawfish we catch. You know, a little short, three foot swipe and you know, you'll get a handful of crawfish. You get a handful of crawfish early in the season, you know you're gonna have a, a good strong crop coming. When you're farming a grain, you can do X, Y, Z in the correct order and you'll end up with Y. Um, when you're dealing with mother nature and an animal, you can do X, Y, Z and not necessarily end up at Y. You might end up at Z or, or R or wherever it may be. The right recipe to be successful uh, on scale. Got it down pretty decent, um, but as soon as you think you have it to a science, Mother Nature will throw you a curve in the next year and everything you did is like a different result. I guess about three or four years ago we made a decision that uh, we weren't going to ship any crawfish out of our farm that weren't, at least anything that has our label on it, uh, that wasn't graded. 
So we ship three basic grades, our quality grade, uh, a select grade, and a premium grade. Uh, the two, the quality and the select is what, what I feed my family. It's the bulk of what we ship out on CajunCrawfish.com. If you're going to have a special event and go through all the trouble of having a crawfish boil, you want to have some good stuff. So that's what we send out on CajunCrawfish.com. Uh, they literally caught that morning and we ship them out that afternoon. In that, every crawfish that leaves here is going to go into a 30 pound sack and that 30 pound sack is going to go into a styrofoam ice chest. We're going to chill them down, we're going to put gel packs in there to keep them cold and we're going to include three pounds of our special blended Cajun crawfish spice and uh, you're going to get an ice cold, lively crawfish direct from our farm. You know I really love what I do and Someone told me once, if you love what you're doing, you'll never work a day in your life. And that's pretty much my life. I get up every day um, with a purpose because I really enjoy what I'm doing. So it, it's not like work to me. It's, it's like doing my hobby.